Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm gonna do a what's for dinner video for you. This is from the past like two weeks. My clips are not always in consecutive days and I just try to do the best I can because some nights I just simply forget to pick up the camera and film until I am done eating. Um, so I'm starting off here with a night that we had breakfast for dinner. I had some hash brown patties that I just was laying out in a baking sheet and I just baked those till they're crispy. This, I think, is some Bob Evans brand um, patty breakfast sausage. I wasn't a huge fan of it. I thought it was pretty good, but not great. Um, I prefer other brands of sausage better. And I'm making this Cracker Barrel, like a buttermilk pancake mix. Um, just pretty simple out-of-the-box mix. You can also make waffles with it as well. I did make it a little bit on the thick side. I should have added a little bit more water, but... The pancakes still came out fine. Um, I just have to remember to add more water next time because I just prefer a little bit like thinner of a pancake rather than a thicker one. Um, but again, they were still good. So I just have my griddle heated up here and you can see they're kind of thick. I know some people prefer their pancakes uh, more thick like this, but I just like them a little bit like more spread out and watery. I did add some blueberries to these and some maple syrup and we had it paired with the hash brown patties and the little Bob Evans um, breakfast sausage patties as well. And I think we also had some iced coffee um, for a drink that night for dinner. The next clip here, I think this was a few days later, I have two huge boneless skinless uh, chicken breasts. These things are huge. I think they were over a pound each. Um, so I just have a baking sheet and I'm just drizzling these with a little bit of light extra virgin olive oil. I just sort of drizzle them and I physically rub them down with, um, you know, I have a rubber glove on just because I feel like it coats the meat really well when you actually like physically rub it in salt and pepper. I just have like some coarse uh, black pepper here in a grinder. And then the salt is like a Himalayan pink sea salt. I have some veggies here cut up and prepped because this night I was making a soup. So I've got carrots, celery, and onion. And I also had about a half of a zucchini to use up. So I just went ahead and threw that in. I did roast the chicken and let it cool. And then as you can see, I cut it up here and it was just seasoned with that um, olive oil, salt, and pepper. I'm first going to, going to saute the veggies in a little tiny bit of extra virgin olive oil as well. I don't fully cook them. I just kind of get the veggies until the onions get caramelized. And then I added in some chicken broth and some bay leaves, some crushed red pepper flake, some garlic powder, some oregano, and I think just a little bit of um, cr more cracked black pepper. And then I added my chicken, of course, in. And then the last 20 minutes, I put in a little bit of this Ditalini pasta. And I prefer a more like chunky soup. I know some people like a brothier soup. So you can really just you know, do whatever you like. If you like it more brothy, you can, of course, add more broth. Um, but this was like a really cold, chilly night. And I just was craving like a nice chicken soup. And you don't have to add pasta. You can add rice. You can add orzo. Some people like potatoes in their chicken soup. Some people like beans. It's just whatever your preference is. And then this next clip here, I made some stuffed shells. So as you can see, I cooked my stuffed shells or I cooked my shells. Um, about, I don't know, 75-80% of the way since they were going to finish up in the oven. I stuffed them with some ground Jimmy Dean pork sausage, some Parmesan cheese, and topped them with marinara and some shredded, just regular like mozzarella pizza cheese. And then I just put the sauce on after. I think I'm pretty sure I put a little bit of sauce in the actual shell with the sausage meat and the Parmesan as well, just so they wouldn't get dried out. Although I do like when my stuffed shells get a little bit crispy on the edges, just a preference. And then I went ahead and just topped it with whatever remaining mozzarella. I think I just had a little bit left in the bag to use up. So I just put it over top and put it in the oven. And these took about, I don't know, 25, 30 minutes, about 30 minutes to bake because the sausage meat was raw. And see how the edges of the shells get crispy. I really like that a lot. We had this with some crusty Italian bread. And we also had some side salads. I do not know if I have a clip of those salads or not. But it was a really tasty dinner. Uh, the next night here, I had some of the Walmart brand basmati rice. And some of this Goya Sazon. And I just had some peppers, onions, and mushrooms to use up. And this stir-fry beef. 
I didn't know what direction I wanted to go with this beef, but I knew I wanted to use it up because I like to eat meat when it's really fresh. I didn't want to just let it sit in my fridge too long. So I have the basmati rice that I seasoned with that Goya, <clears throat> Goya seasoning. I've got the peppers, onions, and mushrooms ready. I've got the beef sauteing up in the same pan that the veggies did. So I just sauteed those up, a little bit of soy sauce, some ginger, some garlic, and then I added the cooked, already cooked veggies back in. So it's kind of just like a beef, veggie, rice sort of stir fry dish. Could have done a lot of things with the beef. I just didn't really know what direction I wanted to take it. So I sort of just looked to see what I needed to use up. And it actually ended up coming out really good. It was just simple, easy, tasty, and it was, it was good. The next clip here, I've got some of the uh, Rana brand skillet gnocchi, which I am obsessed with. It's like a five-minute skillet gnocchi. It gets like super crispy on the outside. And I had this Dietz and Watson pepper and onion sausage. It has the peppers and onions physically inside the sausage. You can kind of see specks of it. I was not impressed with that sausage. I thought it was just okay. I had some side salads here on the side with the gnocchi and the sausage. The sausage was a bummer. I was expecting it to be really good. I was not that impressed, but I probably wouldn't purchase it again. Uh, the next clip here, we're jumping into my son's birthday party that we had at our house. We were very low key this year because of everything going on. So it was just my parents, you know, my husband, my son and I, and my in-laws and my sister. My brother moved to Los Angeles, so he wasn't able to join us. I just put out this like cheese and fruit and cracker little platter. We had a couple hot appetizers too that I forgot to film. And my mom made these little kind of garlic knot rolls and I made this big pot of cream of broccoli soup. Everybody wanted soup, so I went ahead and made it. I'm pretty sure I have a video on my cream of broccoli soup. I'll link it down below in the description box. And we had the soup in my mom's little like garlic knot rolls. It was absolutely delicious and it hit the spot. The next clip here, which is a completely different week, I did a breakfast for dinner again. These are hole in the breads, or some people call them eggs in a basket or bird's nest. There's an egg in the middle of the two pieces of bread, and you kind of just poke that middle area and you dip, you know, you cut off the pieces of bread and dip it into the yolk. Uh, these are some maple flavored link breakfast sausages. I don't know the brand, maybe Johnsonville, but those I prefer greatly over the Bob Evans. And we just had some little mandarin oranges on the side. So this is where my filming got interesting. Um, I've got some beef, cabbage, mushrooms, onions, and peppers that I sauteed up, seasoned it well with Worcestershire sauce, a bunch of different actual seasonings. But that's it because my camera fell into that pot, literally. This is several days later after I had to get my camera repaired. Thank God I was able to get it repaired because it would have been about six to seven hundred dollars to purchase a new one. So I did unfortunately lose some clips that happened previously before this one because when my camera fell into the pot, it just screwed something up in the camera and I lost, I don't know, about four or five clips. So that's kind of a bummer. But I'm just adding some more recent ones into this video um, to give you guys, you know, a decent amount of clips. As you can see, we've got some grilled barbecue chicken, some of the bird's eye like broccoli cheddar, one of those steamer pouches. And these are some pierogies that my husband grilled on the grill along with the chicken. And it was a really good dinner, really easy, really light. I'm not a huge chicken breast fan, but that was really good with the barbecue sauce. So I'm going to finish off this video with a dinner we actually had tonight, some BLTs, got to have the bacon for BLTs, and um, I actually bake my bacon on a sheet pan. I've done it this way for many, many years. I just line a baking sheet, I preheat my oven to 400 degrees, and it takes about 10 minutes on each side. So 10 minutes, I flip the bacon, 10 minutes, and it usually comes out to my liking, <clears throat> unless it's like a really thick specialty type of bacon, but this seems to work the best for me. And then we just had the BLTs with some french fries. So I hope you enjoyed the dinner video this week from the clips from the past couple weeks. If you are new here, I have an entire playlist of these types of videos from over the years. There's probably over a hundred of them because I've been making dinner videos for many, many years long before it was even a thing. So if you want, feel free to check that out. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys. <music>